What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that's all book girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have some dark romance recommendations to share with you. I feel like this goes without saying, but I wanna make it clear before going into these recommendations that these are dark romances. They're called dark romance for a reason. There are tons and tons of triggers. I want to reiterate it, very heavy trigger warnings. So please look up your triggers before going into these books. Make sure they are things that you are okay with and that you can handle because some of them are pretty heavy, especially with certain authors that I'm gonna be recommending. With that being said, let's share these. I really love dark romance. I feel like last month specifically, I read pretty much all dark romance and I just like, I well, I really have to be in the mood for it, but lately I have been, and I'm starting to really discover new authors that I really enjoy their dark romances. So these are ones that I really love. So let's go ahead and get right into the recommendations. Now I have a couple to share by this author specifically because she is one of my favorite for dark romances. The first book is Sicko by Almo Jones. This is a stepbrother MC romance. Almo Jones writes whirlwind books, whirlwind books, ones that will leave your head spinning, they will mess with everything that you thought you knew and give you a whole different perspective. Like, I'm not even kidding you, most of the time I read her books and I'm like, how did she even come up with that? And Sicko was no exception. In Sicko, we are following Royce and Jade, and Jade was adopted into Royce's family as a foster child when she was a baby. And Royce always kind of felt this connection to her that was very unexplainable. Um, as she got older, it turned to be more possessive and protective, and he started fighting feelings that he wasn't sure, or like didn't really know where they were coming from because obviously like she's his stepsister, but there's no blood relation. And you know, he makes it clear in a lot of his dialogue that he just felt something different for her. Something was different about her and the reason why he cared for her so much and really didn't understand it until later on. Jade is battling a lot of things at home, a lot of things that are unspoken and she doesn't talk about, which look into those trigger warnings, like I said. Royce is just very protective of her, very protective of her. He's your typical playboy bad boy as well, but he doesn't let Jade have her freedom and Jade feels the same type of attachment towards him. Without going into too much detail, at some point, Royce decides he's gonna pick up and leave, and he goes and joins the MC, which is the motorcycle club. He leaves, doesn't talk to anybody, doesn't stay in touch, just completely abandons Jade, and he's not really aware of a lot of the things that she's going through, so she is just like, why would he do this to me? Like, not only was I starting to have feelings for my stepbrother, but also like, I thought we were a team. I thought he was supposed to look out for me and he just abandoned me. So he takes off and it's not for like a couple years later where they finally see each other again and she is just taken back by his new lifestyle and really thrown for a loop of why he left and Royce has to face the problems that he didn't know that Jade was going through and the new revelation that he learns from her and then now how they can, well if they can and if they want to continue their brother-sister relationship or see how they fit into each other's lives now. This book is very dark and it's broken up into two different parts. So you see the beginning, like when he's still living at home and then his new life now in the future with, you know, this whole new background and people and, and his whole army of MC people in his life. And then now where Jade can fit into that mix. The next book I'm gonna recommend is another one by Alma Jones and that is The Antichrist. This is one that I just read and I love it. I've said this a lot about Alma Jones's writing is that she, she can be a very messy writer. Some of her books don't work for me, but most of them I, I devour in one sitting because she just grips you in from the beginning. She can make a shit storm work. And I feel like that's the only way I can say it is she takes dark to a whole nother level and somehow it works perfectly. And you leave the book wondering what you just read and how you just read it. I feel like that with the Antichrist because I went into it completely blind, not knowing anything, and then came out being like, how did she, how did she do that? How did she do that? In the Antichrist, we are following Marikai and Nico. And Marikai and Nico have had just this like tethered pull to each other for forever. They're friends in high school in the beginning and you know, Nico is like sleeping around with this other girl and Murkai is like being pursued by other men, but Nico just puts this ownership on her. Like she's not allowed to be touched, but he doesn't want her. And that's the kind of thing that really messed with my head in the beginning. I'm like, why are you being so possessive of her if you're with somebody else, but she can't be with anybody else? So it plays mind games with you and you're like, he, he can't make up his mind, 
but they are just drawn to each other in a very unexplainable way, in a very toxic way, which a lot of the times it reminded me of Hardin and Tessa in the After series. They have that type of toxic relationship, but I love that in books, so it worked for me. There are points in it where they try to let themselves feel for each other, but there's always something in the way and it's kind of, it's not the right time for them. Nico finds out that the president of the like head of New York's MC club has just died and he has been appointed as the antichrist. And that is the person who is the head of the club and he doesn't know anything about it. All he knows is that he has a job to do and he basically has to forget everything that he's known and that he's been attached to and go start this new life for himself. Well, he leaves Marikai and she is just left like, not having that security blanket that she's always had in Nico. Even though they've never really been together, they've always depended on each other in a toxic way. Now that he's not around, she has to figure out how to move on without him. And there are so many twists and turns and plot twists in this, y'all. Like, I don't wanna give spoilers away, so I'm not gonna say too much, but Merkai goes through the freaking crap spinner. That's not even a word. She gets stuck in a terrible position and her life just goes to crap. Her life just goes to crap. And Nico is not there. The one person she's supposed to always be able to depend on, the one person who's always been there to protect her, and now he's living this double life that she doesn't know about, and they can't see each other until they do. Nico is he's crazy he's crazy he's very toxic but she's also toxic too she is just this like strong and mouthy heroine and he is very assertive and cutthroat and not afraid to make choices gets what he wants but is also always finding himself very conflicted when it comes to his feelings for Marikai. please check your trigger warnings on this one do not go into it blind because i did and there were a lot that i did not know about thankfully none of them were my personal triggers i think in the beginning it even says what the trigger warnings are. Yeah, she has a whole page in her author's note. It says, triggers include rape, dubious consent, graphic murder, knife play, necrophilia, blade play, breath play, sadism, severe emotional abuse, child abuse, cheating, a whole effing lot of it. So, I think that answers the question. <laughs> The next book I'm gonna recommend is Tears of Tess by Pepper Winters. In this book, we are following Tess and Q. Tess is on a trip with her boyfriend and they are going overseas. They're trying to travel and spend some time together. They have a very vanilla and like lukewarm bland type of relationship. And Tess is kind of battling in her sexuality with her boyfriend of wanting to try new things, wanting more, wanting more passion, wanting just a little more in the BDSM realm. I mean, she wants to try new things. And her boyfriend is just very content in like their happy little vanilla relationship, doesn't want to branch out. And he's trying, he's trying to understand where she's coming from, but he doesn't quite get it. So while they're on this trip, Tess ends up being kidnapped and taken into a sex trafficking ring. Something happens to her boyfriend and she's not even sure if he's alive or if she's gonna see him again. She's kidnapped, taken into a human trafficking ring and sold to Q. And Q is the anti-hero. Don't call him a hero because he's not. At first, Tess is very confused as to why she is with Q and why she was sold to him. And he's really confused about it at the same time. He was not asking for anybody and that's kind of what makes him the anti-hero because he didn't really want her. Actually, she was given to him as a gift. And you find out why later on and like the, the things that connected to it. But Tess is battling being attracted to Q, even though technically like he's her captor. But also she's kind of justifying it with, well, well, he didn't want me. Like I was technically a gift to him, but I'm still kind of acting like his slave and like doing what he wants and calling him master and all those things. So she is fighting that internal struggle. And then also she's trying to decide like, okay, I, you know, I don't even know if my boyfriend's alive. I don't have any family. Like, do I try to escape and risk being taken and killed? Or do I kind of just suck up my life here? I mean, it's not that terrible. Q doesn't treat me that bad. Do I live here and just deal with it? But it doesn't seem right. So she's going through all these battles of what do I want? What are my choices? Like, what can I really get away with? And why do I want Q so much when I feel like I shouldn't? I thought it was gonna be a lot more dark than it was. Now, I think in the beginning, like be warned going into it, like the sex trafficking when she is kidnapped and taken in before she sold that whole process, that one's pretty dark and that's a little difficult to read, but Q is not really that bad of a guy. And I think that's where, I don't know, I think that's where it worked for me because normally I don't like it and I will never call someone a hero when they kidnap and they're the ones that are doing the sex trafficking and the selling 
and then somehow they end up with the girl. I don't like that. And you start to see ways that he actually might deserve the girl. The next book I'm going to recommend is Opium Skies by C.M. Radcliffe. This book is a, is a journey. They're following Hadley and Ander and Hadley has just lost her mother and she's decided to go to college. So she goes and tries to start over, get a fresh start of her life, trying to figure out what she wants to do now, now that she's lost her mom. And it's not long before she meets Ander. And Ander is a bad boy. He is a bad boy. He is high on life, high on drugs, and high on anything that's bad for him. And the second that he sees Hadley, he is adamant to have her. He wants her, he wants her then, and nothing is gonna stop him despite his addictions and despite all the things that he is like mentally dealing with in his life. And it becomes very toxic, very toxic. I, I keep wanting to refer it to after, just like I did the other book, but Tessa and Harden and after were very toxic. And this is kind of like Andler and Hadley. They are very toxic for each other, but yet they can't seem to stay away and they're just like enabling each other's issues. Hadley does not have issues as much as Ander does, but Hadley finds herself so in love with him and so just like head over heels and deep for how she feels about him that she starts to enable him and she starts to not see those problems. And I think that is a big thing is like sometimes when you're in the thick of something, you don't see clearly. And that's definitely how it was with them in this book. Ander really starts dragging Hadley down and they're trying to figure out how to navigate their relationship with his addiction. She's trying to figure out what to allow and what to put her foot down for, but also like, I love this man. How can this keep going on? And all this is supposed to be just fun and hanging out, having a good time. And then they went and caught feelings. This is actually a series too. I want to say there's two other books in the series. So if you do like it, be sure to pick up the second and the third book as well. The next book I'm going to recommend is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I want to say this going into it, this is not super heavy on the romance, even though, well, kind of. This is one of the most difficult books that I've ever read. Um, and I say that in a very psychological sense of it just messed with my head. I felt very overwhelmed and it was one of those books that I kept thinking about afterwards because I was very taken back by how I felt about it. And I was really unsure, I think, about what my standpoint was, but I ended up loving it. It's very realistic in the approach to, I mean, things like this do happen in real life. So we are following Vanessa and Jacob and Jacob is a teacher at Vanessa's school. Vanessa is 15 and Jacob is 42, okay? It's disgusting, okay? 15 and 42 like there there needs to be nothing going into this and normally I would hate that I would hate it I would say this is not gonna work for me and it would not be something that I would read but the the turn that she takes this book is insane Vanessa is on a scholarship at this elite school that Jacob teaches at and he instantly sees her and notices her and it's not one of those situations where he tries to fight his feelings for her he doesn't and she is very pushy towards him and he is very pushy towards her so they are enabling each other and just basically like letting each other know that it's okay so they start this inappropriate relationship and eventually they get caught vanessa ends up having repercussions of it and jacob gets away with it she ends up falling head over heels in love with him it becomes this very unhealthy addiction her parents move her away and yet she's still finding ways to come back to him and he's accepting her full-heartedly rumors start to go around that maybe this is something that he's doing with other girls too and this is his way of grooming them this entire book takes place over 15 years so it does go past to present just letting you know going into that but the way that they do it is perfect and I wouldn't change that because you get insight into where Vanessa is in her life now and then all the details that led up to it. So they are in each other's life for 15 years and this level of obsession and like toxic behavior and toxic like encounters that they have with each other is something that doesn't end and they keep finding ways to make their way back to each other and then eventually Vanessa has enough. And she's struggling with like Am I just another victim or was this really love? And she's trying to believe what he's saying to her and it, am I just not seeing things clearly or are you screwing with me? It's gonna mess with your head. A huge part of it is really just Vanessa trying to figure out like, is she a victim in domestic abuse? And all of the signs are saying yes, but why do I feel this way about him? And what's Jacob's issue? Why is he acting like this? Why does he want to pursue something with me? Why am I hearing rumors? Like, are they true? Does he really want to be with me? Like, wh where do we stand? Or am I just blinded by love? This is a wild ride, so buckle up, buttercup, if you read this.
The next book I'm going to recommend is Bite Marks by Jenica Snow. This is a vampire romance, which was something new for me. Other than Twilight, this is the only one that I've ever read, and I loved this book. We are following Adrian and Kayla. Adrian is the head vampire of the like vampire clan in their city. Kayla is a girl who has no desire for intimacy. She's a virgin and she has been finding herself repulsed by men, not because she's not attracted to them, but she just wants nothing to do with them as far as intimacy goes. One day she walks into a club and that's when Adrian sees her for the first time and that happens to be his club that he owns. And the thing with the vampires is they don't have any type of sexual intimacy or any type of a relationship with anybody until they find their mate. And this is something that is very coveted in their like species. Once they see somebody and they instantly feel like, okay, that's my person, that's my mate, like nothing stops them. And Adrian, this man is very touch her and I will kill you. Like anybody looks at her and they're dead. Anybody goes near her or talks about her wrong, they're done for. He is very possessive and obsessive and it was perfect for it. I loved it. Kayla is very thrown off by like what he is and who he is and at first she questions it a lot. Like, okay, are you what I think that you are? Like, why, why are you calling me your mate? He calls her kitty and princess and baby and this was just a really fun dark romance, especially because he was so obsessive and possessive. And I think that was a huge point in the book. She had to really come to terms with the level of intensity that Adrian is and also how he means what he says. And if he says that she's his, like she needs to stop arguing and just own it. The last book I'm gonna recommend is Untouchable by Sam Mariano. I want to say this before I start talking about this book. Please, please, please check trigger warnings for this book because the first scene in this book is very difficult to read. This is a bully romance and enemies to lovers. They're following Carter and Zoe and Zoe was being harassed by some players on the football team, one boy specifically, and she had them reported and he was suspended, which meant he couldn't play football anymore. So all of a sudden, Zoe has these football players who are targeting her and who are trying to harass her and make her life a living hell. Carter is one of those guys. Carter is out to make her pay. And he pulls out all the stops and finds all the ways to make her life miserable until he starts catching feelings until things start to turn and he's finding the girl that he's supposed to hate is someone he can't resist. I will say for him being so difficult, they have like explosive banter and chemistry off the charts and not, not quite in the beginning, but towards the end. And this is the epitome of a bully romance. When I think of bully romance, it's something like this. And Sam Mariano takes something that is very derogatory and negative and somehow makes it work. And I mean, thankfully it's fiction and that's not something obviously that I would be okay with in real life, but it worked in this story and Zoe is really struggling with how she feels about someone who is her sworn enemy and who has done things to her that are very unforgivable and things that she shouldn't let slide and let you know herself forget and forgive. It's an emotional ride and I loved it because it was just very fulfilling as a reader, especially I love a good enemies to lovers. And it was something that was not triggering to me, but I could definitely see would be triggering to other people. All right, guys, that's all I have for my dark romance recommendations. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop in the comments below and let me know your favorite dark romance. If you've read any of these, what you thought about them. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting me. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.